Welcome one and all to my channel. This is J.A. Adams. For those of you who've been watching my videos, my teaching videos over the years, welcome back. Those of you who are new, this is the What the Bible Says YouTube channel. And today's topic is what is soul sleep? Uh, some of you may not even be familiar with the term and you, you're just curious. Uh, this is a, a term or doctrine that is taught uh, heavily in the Seventh-day Adventist and Jehovah's Witness. So uh, I have actually never met any Christians that believe in this, but not to say that there aren't any out there that uh, do believe in it. So we're going to discuss this and see where they're getting all this belief system from. So here are some of their go-to scriptures, Ecclesiastes 3, 19 and 21, also chapter 9. 5 and 6, chapter 12, verse 7, Job 14, 10 through 12, and Psalm 115, 17. Let's take a look. Okay, reading from the ESV, uh, Ecclesiastes 3, 19 says, For what happens to the children of man and what happens to the beast is the same as one dies, so dies the other. They all have the same breath, and man has no advantage over the beast. For all is vanity. It goes on to say, all go to this one place from dust, and to dust all return. Who knows whether the spirit of man goes upward, and the spirit of the beast goes down to the earth. So this is just a question. It's, it's not telling us an answer. So this time we're going to read from the KJV, chapter 9, verse 6, uh, 5 and 6. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. And it uh, goes on in verse 6, it says, uh, Neither have they any a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. So we'll look at um, a couple more. Now from the NIV, Job 14, 10 to 12, But a man dies and is laid low. He breathes his last and is no more. So it says in verse 12, So he lies down, does not rise. And later on, it says, people will not awake or be roused from their sleep. So you may see a pattern here where they are going with this and uh, how they come up with this. Uh, but if not, that's okay. We're going to answer that. So lastly, another go-to verse they use is Psalm 115, 17. And uh, the translations all agree with each other. NIV it is not the dead who praise the Lord. Uh, we go down to the place of silence. ESV basically says in so many words the same message. King James, the dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down to silence. The, the New King James and the King James are all pretty much in agreement with this. So this is how they're coming up with this. Let's let's take a look at the, how we answered this. So one of the ways we come to an interpretation in Scripture is some people use uh, in inductive Bible study, some use deductive, some use a combination of both. Uh, but there's certain rules in place, and they are called Bible hermeneutics. And one of them is called harmonizing scriptures. So we need to look at all the, the scriptures of the body of the Bible to come to a, a true conclusion. So we're going to take a look at 2 Corinthians 5.8 and Luke 16, 19 to 31. So here we are, Paul had written a couple letters and some people in uh, the scholarship world say he actually wrote three letters and one was just never put in the Bible, it was lost, but we're, we're just gonna stick with two, 2 Corinthians 5, 8, and we'll start with the ESV. Yes, we are of good courage and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. NIV says, I, uh, I say it would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So the cults are going to say, well, that's talking of a future event. Uh, well, let's, let's take a look at another passage and see if that's so. So we're now going to look at Luke 16, verses 19 to 31. And this is a story. This is, is some people try to include it as a parable, but there are multiple names of real people in this. So this appears to be a real story, not just not a parable. So we know what happened with the rich man. He had died. The beggar named Lazarus had died. And as we get further into the story, 
Um, the beggar had died, and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. So here is the rich man in torment, and uh, he yells out to Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water, cool my tongue, because I'm in agony in this fire. So we see a conversation going on here. Uh, this is consciousness. This is a soul. These are souls. These are spirits. They are not in the body. And we know that this happened before the resurrection of Christ. So captivity had not been taken captive till after. So we had two, two people, one on the side of called paradise, the other called uh, hell, basically, uh, both in Hades, but two compartments. So this notion that people just stay asleep till, you know, thousands of years later, that that's, that just does not line up with scripture. When you take all the body of scripture. We're going to look at one last resource. In the Hebrew for um, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 5 and 6, where it says, the living know they shall die, but the dead know not anything. So the word for know is yada, which is used in a great variety of senses, figuratively, literally, euphemistically. So we're going to take a look at what the actual definition is. So here we are. These are di uh, different words that define what yada means to know, to perceive, to discriminate, to know by experience. So does this mean uh, since once you're in the in the grave, you don't know anything? Yes, your your brain as it is now doesn't know anything. It's dead, but your spirit, your soul, is if you are a believer, it is with in the presence of the Lord. If you're not a believer, you are in that terrible place in Hades, hell, a waiting place for the lake of fire. So um, this just does not line up with scripture. This notion of a soul sleep, uh, it's just one of many false teachings, false doctrines in the cults. So I hope this uh, teaching has been a blessing to you. Uh, if you want to learn more about uh, how to study the Bible and using rules of interpretation, uh, I have a in the description my visual Bible study guide. It helps people who are kind of short on time or they're visual learners, lots of graphics, charts, pictures. Uh, it will help you study instead of having to reading 100 pages of text. So I welcome comments, likes, subscribes. Look forward to seeing you all in the next video and have a blessed day.